Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you coming in. I see a whole bunch more coming in. We're grateful that you joined us today to worship at the Forest Lake Church, whether you're in person or whether you're joining us online. We're so glad you're here today. Grateful for our Forest Lake Academy students. We have our strings. We have our band today. So grateful that they can lead us this morning to worship Jesus, our gracious God. It's good to see you back. Last week, we didn't see you in person due to Thanksgiving. I know my Thanksgiving was a little bit different. It consisted of being outside and being on Zoom, and I hope that you found a way to, to connect with those you love. So as always, we want to remind you of a few ways that you can do that in this community. And just to remind you as well of ways that we can lift each other up. During this time and, and through this season, we've all experienced loss in different ways. It may be the loss of a job, the loss of a graduation, the loss of, of a type of relationship, or the physical loss of a loved one. And I know we've had a lot of loss this year in our community. So I want to let you know that in two weeks, Candy DeVore will be offering a special Surviving the Holidays Grief Seminar. It will be at 4 p.m. Sunday, December 13. Just some practical tools for how to navigate. We just had Thanksgiving, but Christmas coming up. What do you do? How do you, how do you deal with all that? What's, what's even expected? Um, just ways to walk through that. So please come on out or bring someone you know, even if it hasn't been a loss this year. It could be at any time in your life, but something you're thinking about now, you are welcome. So if you'd like to come, feel free to email her at cdevore at forestlakechurch.org. One of our values at our church is the value of family. And so as we start out January 2021, we want to cover our children in prayer. So I invite you, if there's a child in your life of any age, whether they're 5 or 50, to sign them up. Go to our social media, go to our website, forestlake.church, and you'll see a form there to sign up their names to be covered in prayer. Their name will go out, just their first name, and any short prayer request you want to say or just their name, and someone will sign up, they'll receive that name, and they will pray for them for 30 days for God to work in their life. There's also an option there if you want to sign up and say, I'll be a prayer partner. I want to help cover this church. I want to help cover our kids, our students, and our community in prayer over this time. So feel free to, to be involved in that. Lots going on at this time of year. Today, we won't have a, a full-length sermon. We'll get to hear a few words from Tom Tavashi and, and just let God lead us as we join and worship together. So Pastor Jeff's going to go ahead and, and come up now and just share a few words. I guess I get to take this off, don't I? I'm glad you're here. You're going to really appreciate this service today, the beautiful job that uh, Forest Lake Academy uh, strings and band uh, did at the first service, and I know they're going to do again, and it's such a blessing to have them here and a part of this service, and it's another piece of why what I need to tell you is very heavy on my heart, and it's with a profound heaviness of heart that I say to you today what many have already heard, and uh, that is that uh, the same voice that called Alicia and I to this place nine and a half years ago has unexpectedly spoken in our lives again and said that our service here has reached an end and it is time for us uh, to move on to another place. And so we have accepted an invitation to lead the church in Boulder, Colorado, We'll be headed there, uh, well, this will be our last month here, and we will be headed out there at the beginning of next year. This is a very hard thing and a very unexpected thing and not something that we saw. This community has been so important to us in so many ways. When, when our son Nathan went through his difficult time, when Alicia went through her year, this community was here for us and gathered around us and, and loved us in these challenges. Our children. Uh, Ariel went from kindergarten to high school in this place, and our sons grew from little lads at home to off doing the things they're doing. This community has been an incredible blessing to us, 
And this is a remarkable time in this community. I think uh, the staff that has gathered here over the last few years is really the finest church staff in the North American division. I, I don't think there's another staff anywhere that can match what is happening here. And so in that context, it all seems surprising, but that's the nature of the, the leading of the Lord. It's a wind, and we don't know from whence it comes or goes, but we do know that faithfulness is what is most important to it. So I want to thank everyone. We'll be here. Uh, my, our last Sabbath will be January 2, and uh, we'll be here through this month of December. I would have communicated this last Sabbath, but we had that awesome video, and I thought that would be a real downer to hook that to that amazing video that was done for last Sabbath. But I, I just want to say thank you to this community. This really has been the fulfillment of my fondest dream in ministry, is that at some point I would be able to uh, be a pastor in a church like this and see the amazing things that this community has accomplished in the last nine and a half years. And uh, so thank you for those amazing things and those amazing times. And we have a little more time in this month, but Alicia and I have, have enjoyed this time immensely and uh, covet your prayers as we continue to seek to understand the Lord's will. So Julie's going to come back just so that uh, this doesn't end in a just complete downer. So she's going to say something lovely now. I know all of you will be wanting to connect with Pastor Jeff and Alicia. Of course, it's different um, this year, but we'll definitely be looking at some ways we can do that. So stay tuned uh, over the next few weeks as we seek to, to pray with them and support them and, and talk with them as they head out. As I was thinking about this and, and our transition, the image that came to mind was the Israelites going through the wilderness and how they were led by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And God's word tells us that sometimes that cloud would stop and wherever it would stop was where they would make camp. And sometimes it would stay there for a day or a month or a year. And when it lifted, they knew that was the presence of God saying, this is where I'm leading you. And I think about that as they have seen the cloud move and I think about, about how God is continuing to lead this church and how that was that time at that time where they were able to see this cloud. But then we saw thousands of years later, Jesus, God with us, how he's so much more personal right now and through the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's what they experienced at that time through the tabernacle, through the sanctuary. And whatever the Israelites saw, Moses, their leader, going into the tabernacle, God's word says they would stand at the entrance of their tent and worship every man. They would come out, they would see him meeting with God, and they would worship. Let's bow our heads as we come to God in worship this morning. Father, you are a gracious God. You are slow to anger. You are an all-consuming fire and yet a, a very close and personal Jesus. Thank you for being a God who still speaks, who leads us, who surprises us, who moves like the wind, and who never leaves us. We love you. Open our hearts this morning as we lay aside the things we've been thinking about, our burdens, our joys, and may our worship be acceptable in your sight, God, and bring joy to your heart. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. Marty and I got to enjoy this morning what so many of you have already enjoyed. Uh, this is our first day back in the sanctuary. And we had uh, an experience very similar to what many of you have had, and that is it's really wonderful to be back in this sanctuary, and it's really wonderful to be with the people that we love. So um, we're going to have a prayer this morning. We'd like to bring a few special requests uh, to your attention for our corporate prayer as well as our individual prayers, if you would. First, Eve Rose Archer, who is the mother of a former Forest Lake pastor, Sabine Vitell. We'd like to remember her. Doris Bean, and the family of Barbara Foster. Uh, this morning, Marty is going to pray in Spanish, and then I'll pray in English. Mm -hmm. Shall we bow our heads? Querido Padre Celestial, santificado sea tu lindo nombre. Gracias, Padre, por el privilegio que tenemos de estar aquí unidos en esta mañana para adorarte. Te damos gracias, Padre, por tu gran misericordia, porque tienes piedad sobre la humanidad y porque siempre obras para nuestro bien. Padre, estamos reunidos esta mañana para venir y pasar tiempo contigo y queremos pedir tu Espíritu Santo que more en este lugar, Padre, y que alcances, Padre, a cada ser que está mirando hasta por la o lo que sea, como lo hagan, Padre, para conectarse contigo, que pueda cada uno sentir tu presencia y que nosotros como un pueblo seamos un, un pueblo activo, Padre, que podamos salir y compartir tu gran amor con muchos. Te pedimos por misericordia para aquellos que están enfermos y esos, Padre, que sufren dolor. Te pedimos que tú seas ese consolador y que tú vengas cerca. Te pedimos ahora que prepares nuestros corazones para recibir el mensaje por música y que tú prepares, Señor, todo lo que se va a presentar de tal modo que puede impactar para bien. Por Cristo Jesús te lo pedimos todo. Amén. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. Thank you for this uh, worship service that we are about to enjoy. Uh, Lord, we bring to you this morning several special requests, and we know that there are many other requests on the hearts of those who are in attendance here or watching online. We'd like to specifically mention Eve Rose Archer, uh, Doris Bean, and the family of Barbara Foster. I'd like to also ask, Lord, that you be especially with our health care professionals and first frontline responders who are playing such a, a critical role uh, during this pandemic and upon uh, whose shoulders are placed a great deal of responsibility and, and stress. I pray that you will be with them, be also with our uh, pastor, and his family as they plan to take up their new responsibilities. It's been such a joy to have Pastor Jeff and his family uh, here, and they have, have had such a positive impact on our community and on our church. Pray that you will richly bless them as they make this transition. I pray, Lord, that uh, your Holy Spirit will be present today during this special program, and that through the spoken word and through the wonderful music that we enjoy, that you will speak to the hearts of all of those who are present today. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I am thrilled to be here this Sabbath morning with the strings and the band. This is the favorite part of my job. It's my passion, has been for everything since I started band fifth grade. Music has been a passion. When it became my senior year in academy and I had to choose, well, you know, what are you gonna do after academy? And I thought, wait a minute. 
If I become an academy music teacher, I don't have to quit. So that was the reason I had, and so now, um, quite a few years since that, went back for a 40th reunion a couple years ago, and uh, realized that I was older than, of course, all the students in the group, including the director. That I, they weren't even born when I graduated from there. But I wanted to pass on those opportunities to share and to bless others, and so that's why I've given my career life to working with academy music students and sharing that passion, giving them that opportunity to develop their skills and then to be able to share them and bless others. Our music this morning is going to focus on the Christmas season, the greatest story that was ever told of a God who loved his creation so much he could not just hit the delete button and start over, even though it's one speck in the distant universe of his, every single one of us is of infinite value. And last I checked on the internet, there's like 7.725, and the number keeps counting each time. Every one of those new numbers that pops up is a creation of God, and the plan of salvation is for each one of us. And God wants to be with us individually, and we're going to share about that through the service, how it's a personal plan of salvation, and he wants to dwell in our hearts. The music with the strings is going to start off with some music that puts you back in those Bethlehem scenes. Um, this next piece is called Winter Milky Way. And put yourself maybe riding a camel alongside the wise men at night, off in that desert, and you see the bold starry sky and the Milky Way galaxy. Or maybe you're walking the streets of Bethlehem. Maybe you're uh, heading out with the shepherds, just taking their sheep out for what they thought was an ordinary night. And just, you know, it's got to be a long time with, with sheep, like hour after hour. And, uh, but that night was very much different when they were able to hear actual angels singing. So the greatest story ever told, we're going to play music that will accompany that now. So put yourself in one of those scenes and enjoy Winter Milky Way.
past two years in strings, it has been a thrill having a pianist with us who does a great job, and Nicole is going to share one of her favorite Christmas solos with you at this time, Silent Night, and this arrangement will truly take you right back. You're just standing there looking in the stable at the nativity scene. Thank you, Nicole.
This next piece is a medley called Winterfest. It will include Low How a Rose Air Blooming, the Holly and the Ivy, and then that beautiful Bach Chorale, Break Forth, O Beauteous Heavenly Light. I've been talking with the strings in the band this week. The concept of this plan of salvation, it's God with us, with our planet. But narrow it down to each one of us. God, it's not just a big, greater picture. It's the individual heart that God wants. And so I asked the strings in the band this, this week, what can you do? What do you do maybe on a daily basis? to make God closer to you. 
His God's ultimate goal is to have a personal relationship that thrives with each one of us. And we talk about, you know, as we go through this pandemic and the adjustments you have to make, well, rather than just surviving, how do we thrive in a pandemic? Think outside the box, the ideas, and this has been a great group to work with, with those questions. So I asked that, and they shared among their neighbors, and some of the answers were really wonderful. And I said, hey, can you share those this Sabbath? So we have several students that I'd like to call up right now and just share their ideas on what they do to make God feel closer to them. So Yadlin, Adana, Nicole, Sydney, and Maya, if you guys could come up and just step up to the mic and just share those answers that you shared in rehearsal this week on those things you do to make God close to you. So I like to go out to nature and look at what God has created. And it's very interesting because God just have, could have, God just have put us in the world and there could have been nothing. But God put something beautiful in it as well so we can enjoy it and yeah. For me, it's when I read my Bible and when I pray, and when I read my Bible, I have a closer relationship with him by that. Um, For me, it's when I pray before I do tests or quizzes because it helps me um, feel more comfortable and not be as stressed. Um, Like Sydney's, I like to go out into nature, and I just, when I don't hear anything, there's no distractions, and I can just listen to the birds, listen to the wind. It just, in my opinion, it helps me feel closer to God. All right, so I have a small dog, and my small dog loves going on walks, and so she's very demanding. So sometimes, anywhere from seven to nine at night, she'll start, like, scratching on the door, and that's her signal, like, hey, it's time for someone to bring me outside. And I used to hate when she did that because it was really annoying for me. But now those walks kind of became my spiritual time. And so usually it'll be later at night, so there'll be stars out. And so what I'll do is I'll pick one specific star for the whole walk. And that star will kind of be my representation of God. And so I'll look at the star and either in my head or out loud, I'll kind of have a conversation with Jesus. And that'll kind of just, I think having that star and knowing that he created it and he created me really just helps me feel like he's there and he's listening to me. So. Thank you. Those are life skill ideas. Just always have something different. You know, in your day, every day, sometimes something comes up, whatever. But if we have that habit of being able to use the many ideas that they just shared with you. Um, If we're driving in your car, I come to these stoplights. Some of them are three minutes long. Guess what? I have some cards in the console of my car that I keep that have scripture texts, things that I want, places I'd like to put my mind. So for two minutes, I'm sitting there, I can review those, put them down and stuff and wait. The light turns. I want to make sure I'm safe driving, but I know I'm going to have at least three minutes at some of those intersections. And so I just use that time to connect with God or use that when you see a red light instead of, oh, no, I got to stop. Wait a minute. That red light can remind you of the red blood of Jesus Christ and take that time for a couple minutes and pray for some people. And if you don't have anybody right on your mind, just ask God, trust me, he will send you the name. Oh, I remember that student from years ago. I wonder what they're doing. I'm gonna pray for them. God wants a thriving relationship with each one of us and it's not stale, it is, it is growing. Every day is what he wants it to be, an ongoing relationship. And those ideas that uh, you shared, I really appreciate those. Um, for this last piece, this is the glory of Christmas and this will uh, share some of the joyous celebration that is going on in heaven because every time one of us, 7.7 billion, responds and say, responds to the love of Jesus. Heaven rejoices. Celebrations keep going on. And it started uh, with this whole plan of salvation. And every time one of us makes that decision for Christ, heaven celebrates. So think of that as we play the glory of Christmas. Thank you. 
There's no smooth way, we're not magicians, we can't make nothing happen. The strings are gonna need to leave the stage and the band will come on and it's just take, take a little bit of shuffling. So just uh, have a little fellowship, uh, think. Anyway, it's just gonna take a little time. We'll be all back together in just a minute. Thank you very, very much, strings.
such a magnificent instrument, and I really appreciate, Will, how much dedication you have put in in your life to bringing majestic music like that. That's why when we designed this service, I wanted one organ solo right in the middle. Everybody's attention, just savor it and enjoy it. Um, I have enjoyed organ music for a long time, not as a performer. It still amazes me how people use all ten fingers and both feet three lines of music, and anyway, it takes a lot of dedication, so all the organists out there, I deeply appreciate that. Um, my wife and I have enjoyed music, uh, organ music, ever since college. Uh, Walla Walla College, of course, they had the third largest organ in the Pacific Northwest. We got to hear those postludes on that. And then um, when she went away to the nurses' campus in Portland, Oregon, and I'd drive four hours over there and visit, you know, with some of the other guys that, you know, their true love is four hours away now, we would go date night to a place called Organ Grinder Pizza in Portland, Oregon. And they had this magnificent theater organ, and you could order pizza, and it was like date night, and you got to hear all these wonderful tunes of the organ. So between the college organ and the organ grinder pizza, we got some wonderful music uh, that we enjoyed and have enjoyed ever since. The band will play kind of the celebratory pieces. The, the band can play soft, but we're going to be able to raise the roof a bit because it's everything from that tranquil, silent night to the herald angels singing. And if you take yourself back there to those shepherds in the field, the, what they thought was the ordinary night, and they got to hear an angel choir celebrating this big event of the plan of salvation taking unfolding right there. And so put yourself in those kinds of th scenes and the celebration that happens in heaven every time one of us responds positively to God's love.
that's why I'm in band. 51 years later, after fifth grade beginning band, I can't quit. I get high on band and strings. We talk straight. We have, I, I tell the band, look, we're going to talk about getting high today. And they think, what, what, what? There's a... No, not that way. I'm talking about the ways that God has so many ways for us to have, uh, to get high that are positive. You look back on them five years later, ten years later, the God's ways, and the memories are still good. They're things that help us grow and explore God's creation, and music is one of those absolute thrills that uh, if you stop and just think of what goes on to create music, Think of all that has to happen with the brain, the coordination of the fingers, those string players, many of them, eight and ten years that they've been playing and honing their skills. And to be able to get just the right motion on the bow, the exact place with the strings, the rhythms, you're, you're using your eyes to read the music. That, that's a miracle in itself that you can see these dots on the page that some composer learned the skill of harmony and melody and created, put the dots down there, you look, you hear it, it comes into your brain, you put the, uh, the instrument and you make that happen with just the right mechanical um, or, or muscle memory and then the sound waves go out to you, the audience, and it comes in your ear, in your brain, swirls around, that, that's as medical as I can get. It swirls around and it respond, you respond with emotions. And you've heard a spectrum of emotions here, from the strings that tranquil to the light, buoyant, and then the band with the powerful majestic. How did that happen? Billions of years ago, some gases exploded and it's evolved to this. I, I can't think that that is absolutely even possible. I have to believe that there is a creator who loves us enormously and who is really, really smart and gave us all these ways to experience his love. And music is one of those. There's food, there's exercise, there's nature, and the things that the uh, students mentioned when they came up and shared here. We have a God that loves us enormously. And his greatest wish at this Christmas season, remember that wish book that well, some of us got in the mail every year? The Christmas wish book that's about an inch thick from the Sears and Roebuck Company. It has all these things you could get for Christmas. And my brother and I would look over that just hoping we'd get one of those things, you know, maybe the, the hockey set where you turn those little knobs and the players go around, or the electric race car set or that electric football set <laughs> where the board vibrated and the players. We wanted wow, one of those presents. Well, you know what? God has a wish book too. It's a lot thicker than one inch, and it has 7.725 and counting billion pictures in there, each one of us. And he wants the whole book. His desire, he wants every single one of us to respond. He's put the plan of salvation in place. Our job is to look at that and say, you know what, Lord? I just love you. I love what you have done for us. The only way I can respond is give you my heart back. That is what God wants. That's God's wish book. As we play the next few pieces, it's going to be that celebration that we hear Every time in heaven when another person says, all right, Lord, I'll, I'll make your wish come true. Here's my heart.
will take you across the Atlantic to the British Isles, which have some wonderful tunes, wonderful melodies. In our hymnal, there's some beautiful things. And you look on the upper right hand, it says British Isles. And uh, this is a medley. It has, I saw three ships, good people, all this Christmas time, and the seven joys of Mary. I also this week posed that same question that I did for the strings in rehearsal. What makes God close to you? 
And I asked that of the band, and they shared among each other, and we have several that are going to share their, their ideas. So Elijah and Chelsea, if you, Elisha and Chelsea, if you would come up and share what you shared with the band. Personally, I feel closest to God when I write in my prayer journal. I'm a person who likes to write because I feel most in tune with my emotions then. So similarly, I feel closer to God when I'm writing in my prayer journal. It's good to have a prayer journal because you can log prayers maybe that you've been asking for and then see the answered prayers later. Or when you're struggling and then you can come back with a new faith realizing how you've grown. So thank you. Hello, one of the ways I like to experience God is through uh, praise and worship, because there's different variations in which you could praise him from, like playing band and praise and worship where you could sing. And like, I could feel the presence of God around me and others too. So it's a really good experience that I love. Thank you. Thank you. There's a really, really special guest in the audience today. This is his first concert. Won't be his last. My eight-month-old grandson, Callan, is here on the front row. He went to Sabbath school, his first time at Sabbath school, and uh, he's here for the concert, and he's still got a smile on his face, so he's had his choice of a lot of instruments, from the strings to the band to the organ. Lots of ideas that I'll be sharing with him and uh, look forward to helping his music education and realizing how much joy and those things are getting high on things that God shares with us. So, Kellen, we've got a lot of concerts in store, and I hope to start you on an instrument uh, maybe uh, sometime down the road here. So anyway, I just couldn't help that. Kellen and I spent some quality time tonight because we watch him one or two nights a week. Both of his parents are... Uh, cardiac intensive care nurses and so sometimes they'll do a double shift I mean they'll do a shift 12-hour shift together and so his uh, Callan's grandparents get to take care of him for a day or two it's nice having them three blocks away and to be able to share that with him so anyway Callan thank you for coming appreciate your attendance here in our program <laughs> anyway we're gonna close uh, the band's portion of the program with we'll just unleash the celebration and all the bells shall ring.
I hope you have had as much fun as I have. This has been a long time coming. We went away on spring break, didn't come back for like five months. So in August, when we have our first rehearsal, first thing I said to strings and in band was, well, how was your spring break? <laughs> and anyway, things have gradually gotten better and better since then, and it's just joy to rehearse each day with these students because we've got this shared mission of wanting to bless others with our music. And I want to thank each and every one of you for what you bring to rehearsal, for what you bring to these concerts. I am thrilled. Thank you. Once more, we just want to be thankful and uh, say thank you to Tom Tavashi and for each of the students of the Forsyth Academy Strings and Band for being with us today and bringing us beautiful music that helps to settle our hearts in the meaning of this season. It does that for me anyway. Thank you again. We also want to say thank you to you. Thank you for how you throughout this season have been generous and faithful in this community. I have to draw your attention over to the corner to this, this circle, this ring that we put up back in November. You notice that it's moved a little bit from the fall colors. It's now become a Christmas wreath. The thing is, a Christmas wreath isn't supposed to be white. It's supposed to be full of beautiful Christmas color. And we need you to help us to do that. So we, uh, we just once more want to say that we're thankful for, for your generosity. All through this, uh, this summer and the difficult time that we've been through this year, Anyone would have thought that, falling, uh, that giving would fall off and that people wouldn't give as much because they're not present in the building for many of those months. But you have been very generous and very faithful, and we have done very well. We just want to finish the year in a great place. We have a couple of special projects that are included in that, along with most of that is our regular budget anyway. And we just uh, know that you will because historically this community has been extremely generous in the month of December. And we want to thank you already for how you will do that again. Um, but yeah, it's got to become more like a wreath. It needs to be a little better. Maybe next week we'll have a little more. Again, thank you for all of that and for your generosity. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you again for your goodness to us. We thank you that you are with us in this time. And even through all the challenges and the chaos in our world, there is one thing. There is that bright star that reminds us that Jesus has already come and he is coming again. We know that this time of the year, our hearts are lifted once more to remember the gift of Jesus. Like Tom has told us, we are all in his wish book. He has already done for us what we cannot do for ourselves and loved us beyond measure. So today, once more, we are thankful for that gift and for your goodness to us. May we somehow, small way, be able to return that love back to you in our hearts and in our lives. We just want to thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So the ushers will usher from the back, as we usually do. And we are glad to see you today and hopefully see you again soon. <laughs>